Hello again, YouTube. This is Dr. Kendo, and I am here with some Scribble Knots Unlimited Object Editor Commentary ness. So, if you're new to this series, it's basically I have a huge list of requests. There's probably still like 60 something or 50 something items on my list right now that uh, I have taken from the past to create and their beloved gaming characters that we're all familiar with. So, I'm starting out actually with this teenager, and it really doesn't matter what you pick. You could probably do kid, you could probably do man. Just kind of take a humanoid of some kind. I would say don't really go out there with, you know, the crazy sorts of humanoids. Like, don't pick any of the monster characters like Kappa and whatnot because we want something neutral for this. Because I have a request from two subscribers right here, I'll go ahead and put their usernames up on the screen right about now and let you know that today we are creating Pac-Man. So why would I use a humanoid, one that has legs and everything, for Pac-Man? You might be thinking, hey, Pac-Man doesn't have any legs. Well, you're right, motherfucker. But the modern Pac-Man does have legs and arms. So uh, we'll actually be starting off with the modern Pac-Man, as I'm going to call him. Basically, you know, if you ever played that uh, Mario Kart arcade game and stuff, you know, and they had Pac-Man in it. Some of the uh, other kind of 3D versions of Pac-Man and whatnot, there was this humanoid version of him. And so we're actually taking on this Tooth Fairy wing. This I need to be very clear about because people still ask, uh, even when I fully explain where I got this from, this shape right here is in the 29 page library as I call it. It's just a general library of arms and legs and different various shapes and lots of the shapes go to a certain character. For instance, one of them in there is the Tooth Fairy and so I'm grabbing her wings. Now you can't just type in Tooth Fairy wings. You can do that but it won't create that edged shape. It'll create a more rounded shape with her wings. So it is technically the same object but they are different in their appearance because from the general 29 page library, that Tooth Fairy wing is not all rounded and it's more jaggedy you know kind of straight lines and things so we're taking glue for the little tongue that's inside the hemisphere right here which is pac-man's mouth we just use the capsule shape so any of these are creatable in scribble knots unmasked as well so that's why i'm just doing it in unlimited right now you can use any of these shapes in scribble knots unmasked the capsule is basically like a little line shape but it is the nose and of course i'm making a few adjustments for his egg eyes yes i used eggs for the eyes uh, i used a boomerang for his eyebrows. You could probably also just type in eyebrows. That would probably work just fine for you. Uh, I'm using one of Maxwell's brothers, my favorite one I would say, which is Kenpo. Yes, it sounds a lot like Kendo. I know everybody can say that. And I'm using a boxing glove for his arms right here. He actually has these giant gloves and they are kind of shaped like that. You know, it looks like he almost does have boxing gloves on. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here for the hands. So just taking Kenpo's other arm and painting the things yellow, of course, for his arm and orange for the gloves. And so you can see actually that we have the green grid on right now and I'm moving down this top square all the way down to kind of to the middle of the Pac-Man's body because that's actually where the head is for that teenager that we started out with. So I want the head to be kind of in the middle where Pac-Man's actual head is. And so now we've just taken a general arm shape from the 29 page library again, that general library of shapes. This is, you know, they have like an arm and a leg, kind of just a generic shape. It's like a peach colored, cream colored arm arm or leg shape, whatever that is. Uh, so that's what we're using for his legs. We just need some thin little legs because he has thin legs and arms. And I just use shoe. You can just type in shoe and it kind of creates this big shoe right here. We need to probably adjust some sizes of things. Just make sure and see what he looks like when he has two shoes, maybe. Uh, basically, this Pac-Man, though, this modern Pac-Man has big shoes and big hands. But uh, one thing that I also like to introduce in this series and all the episodes recently is read off some fun facts, things that I've researched. Uh, so Pac-Man, uh, the most successful coin-operated video game in history, was actually released in the U.S. in 1980 and 1979 in Japan. Interestingly enough, Namco released the game in Japan while it was Midway who released it in the States. The first machine ever was installed in a movie theater in Tokyo. Most of us know how Pac-Man is played, of course, but you may not know that his original name was to be Puck-Man until the creators realized it kind of sounds like a certain four-letter cuss word, or they were mostly having the concern that vandals would scratch part of the P off the name to create unsaid cuss word. So anyway, there are 240 small dots in the maze of a Pac-Man level with four larger flashing circles or power pellets. The game ends when all of your lives are eaten away by the ghosts in the game, famously known as Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde in the original Pac-Man. 
Our good old Pac-Man here was deemed the most recognizable video game character by the Guinness Book of World Records, with 94% of Americans immediately being able to identify him. Which I thought was really crazy, because, you know, it's like Mario and Sonic, those are very iconic video game characters as well. Wouldn't you think that they would be some of the most recognizable? But they probably were in the list with him. So, you probably saw that I just created some scripts and everything while we were talking about the fun facts. The scripts are basically so that Pac-Man will eat dots or circular things, and he'll eat fruits. I've even got it so that he'll eat a key. You know, if you got really far in Pac-Man back in the days, uh, they actually had a key that you could eat as one of the things, you know, other than fruit. I've also made it so that, of course, I typed in this ghost here. Pac-Man will run away from ghosts. So, that was another script that I made sure to do. We're here on this level called Palindromeda. I thought it gave it kind of that Pac-Man-y look or whatever, since no levels on Scribblenauts are really that Pac-Man-ish. So, anyway, of course, I was saying this is kind of the modern Pac-Man, and so I actually called him Modern Pac-Man. Pac-Man, and uh, the way that Pac-Man is officially spelled is actually P-A-C-M-A-N, but I didn't want to confuse people and I didn't want to make it any harder to type or whatever, so I just created it as P-A-C-M-A-N, uh, Pac-Man, all is one word. But here you've seen that I've spawned the classic Pac-Man, kind of the older Pac-Man or whatever, so we'll go ahead and go into the object editing and whatnot after I put that apple down <laughs> for them to eat. Uh, so yes, I've basically just used two hemisphere shapes. Uh, no, I'm not particularly proud of how this ends up, but there's not a whole lot of ways to do Pac-Man. I have seen that other people in Punctuation Plaza on the Wii U, that's basically the place where you download and share objects with each other. Other people have done it this way, uh, where you basically use two half circle shapes, this hemisphere, and uh, the thing that's different, hopefully, about mine is that I actually used a dinosaur as the source object, and my reasoning for that was I wanted to take the head of the dinosaur, which has a jaw shape that can open, and I wanted Pac-Man, uh, my classic Pac-Man here, to be able to open up his mouth, basically, instead of just just be a stationary, like that's probably how a lot of people make it on the object editor right now. If you, we were to go check out Punctuation Plaza, probably a lot of them would just have a still open-mouthed Pac-Man. You know, it wouldn't look like a Pac-Man that could open his mouth up. So that's kind of really what I was aiming for. You could probably investigate, if you had more time than I did, you could probably investigate which sort of animal or monster opens its mouth up more, because I'm sure that there is one. Uh, dinosaur was just kind of what I landed on in the interest of time, and you even saw that I didn't show the entire process of how to create it and everything, uh, just kind of showed the modern Pac-Man from the beginning. But please feel free to ask me questions if you do uh, have any questions of how you would create something like that, but it definitely involves a lot of moving around the green grids and uh, getting shapes right where they need to be, and I think that they turned out pretty good, so I definitely like the end result here as they're eating dots that I'm placing on the board or level or whatever. Anyway, I appreciate it. You know, I, I definitely love that you guys are so enthusiastic about the series. One thing that I'm probably going to do each month is take one week off from Scribble Knots. Usually they're uploaded every Sunday, but it helps to have that one week off so that I can work on Scribble Ventures and work on some other things. I've actually got some big projects in the works, and Mario Kart 8 is going to be coming out in May, as was confirmed by Nintendo this last week. And so once that game comes out, I definitely am going to be t taking even more time, I guess, away from Scribble Knots to do that as well. So the channel, hopefully you enjoy Mario Kart. If you don't, um, hopefully you'll enjoy this stuff that I put up. And get acquainted with it because it's an amazing game and it's probably my favorite franchise in all of video gaming I would say um that's actually really tough to say because I like Zelda and Pokemon as well I don't know anyway it's way up there and that was how Dr. Kendo actually started on YouTube was doing Mario Kart Wii commentaries but I digress. Anyway, I have a lot of things to work on. So with that, I think either the third or fourth week of the month, I'll take that Sunday off. I will always put something at the beginning and end of my videos that says, hey, I'm taking the next Sunday off. So we'll basically have three or four Scribble Knots episodes a month. And since everybody's always wondering, requests, uh, they're probably about six and a half months away from being taken. I slate it for around July. That's probably when we can take requests again. So just, uh, uh, kind of my guess here. It'll probably be July or August. But I'll leave it at that. Again, I thank you guys so much. There's always some super positive comments and I love it. You guys are the bomb. You're one of the best online communities out there right now. So I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say about Pac-Man and the objects to come. So I will catch you on the next vid and thanks for viewing. And down the road up